You may have noticed that we seem to be breaking weather records of every kind. Yes, there is heat, of course, but this planet has set records for cold this year and last. Tropical storms, tornadoes, flooding, drought, Antarctica just had record high ice. The world is noticing enough for the money-driven mainstream media to get involved. The interest is spilling over into space weather as well, in my opinion the most underappreciated aspect of climate science. And since the MSM are now stepping to the plate on these topics on a serious level, I feel compelled to weigh in on the one-sided man-made CO2 causation of climate change. Now the best place to start is with that story, the standard climate change paradigm. You are likely to see how nicely correlated CO2 and global temperature have been for hundreds of thousands of years. They highlight the recent spiking of atmospheric CO2. NOAA has a nice tool where you can compare many different metrics. I've included sea level rise along here with temperature and CO2. Recent readings put us just shy of 400 parts per million of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Now this chart is less popular. It shows methane in green, also correlated with global temperature for hundreds of thousands of years. And by the way, 25 times more potent a greenhouse gas than CO2, and water vapor dwarfs both of them. Switching gears back to temperature, looking back hundreds of millions of years this time, you can see the Earth has indeed had temperature shifts on a large scale. We have recently been in a fairly significant minimum. 2011 global temperature was 57.9 degrees Fahrenheit. 2012 was hotter for sure, so we'll call it a little higher. We absolutely are heating up sharply now, but this has happened in the past and we are nowhere near a high point. Well, what happens when we add CO2 to this temperature chart? Recently, we have been very low in terms of atmospheric CO2, and the correlation of CO2 to temperature is not so evident when you look at this larger sample. Given we're right around 400 parts per million, using the scale on the left, we are still relatively low at the bottom of my cursor in terms of atmospheric CO2. The human CO2 causation advocates like to show energy output by the sun to show it is relatively flat over the same shorter time periods they show for CO2. Now, Although it does indeed increase, it is minimal, and in my opinion only a tiny fraction of the space weather aspect. I'll play their game and focus on the shorter timeline. Now while the overall solar output has only increased minimally, our interface with the energy and with cosmic radiation, specifically the protective interface of the magnetosphere, has begun to fail. This is the weakening of Earth's protective grid for over the last 400 years. If this is news to you, welcome new friend. Regular viewers here at the start of 2013 are well aware of the failing magnetic shield, as is most of the scientific community. This will be a review for many, but Earth is indeed overdue for a reversal of the magnetic field, and while every scientist on Earth will tell you it takes thousands of years, I'm suspicious. NASA compiled this list of peculiar North Pole movements, the magnetic north. It is supposed to shift around like it did here over 73 years, but the following jumps were significantly larger, significantly larger than average. And in 29 years, the pole moved as far as it had the previous 69 years. But that was only the beginning. It kicked the tires and began racing faster across the Arctic Ocean at 25 miles per year in 2005. And in 2010, it was clocked at 40 miles per year on a warpath towards Russia. Their long-term timelines aren't exactly adding up. I want to briefly tangent from the climate to mention that our weakening magnetosphere makes us more vulnerable to solar flares. The weakening shield means we could sustain critical damage to our satellites and power grids from less powerful flares than we normally would. Now the solar kill shot, as it's called, can happen at any time. The largest we've had in the modern era, which luckily occurred before we had complex global electrical systems, occurred during a relatively weak cycle. Briefly, the energy from a solar flare expels electrically charged particles in the corona, called a coronal mass ejection. This is why we need the magnetosphere. The kill shot would overwhelm our shield, wreak havoc in geosynchronous orbit, and when the auroral electrojet was surged with particles, it would induce ground currents that would overwhelm and fry our power grids. According to NASA, the grids could be out for years. No food at the store, no water from the tap, no gas at the pump, no heat, no phone, no way to call for help, just you and all the other hungry people. Hope you're prepared. Now if I'm going to explain why Earth's magnetic shift is important to the kill shot, I should probably also mention that I believe we have the ability to disrupt the auroral electrojet, the thing that would induce the killer ground currents. You are looking at the possible heating mechanisms of the auroral heater at Kokona, Alaska, known as HARP. Let me quickly say that there is high frequency weather modification along with VLF devices spread across the globe that work with chemtrails to mitigate our rapidly declining climate circumstance. 
but if it is not one of the suspiciously large proportion of ionospheric heaters located at the Arctic Circle beneath the auroral electrojet, it does not deserve to carry the HARP name. Now, the purpose of auroral heating is to alter the electrojet directly. There are admitted uses, and there are uses they don't admit. They can use this device to create what amounts to a giant radar in the sky. They can heat large areas and change the weather. My recommendation is to read the papers. When considering the wildest conspiracy theories, I tend to discover the truth somewhere in the middle between what they're saying and the limited admissions of the mainstream papers. But since I understand that huge, dense auroral currents are our worst enemy, I like the notion that we can expand that region, potentially lowering the density and therefore induction. Not to mention that we can alter the very conductivity of the electrojet. Can we avoid this? I believe it's possible. If you don't like what I'm saying right now, honestly ask yourself, what if we all knew that we had the ability to mitigate a solar storm, but the government blatantly refused to fund the research or build the machines? Wouldn't this community be screaming conspiracy? There might be a place for such discourse, friends, but please, it's not here. By the way, this is not a hydraulic wave pull or pressure-driven wave maker, it's simply radio frequencies pulsed through the water. Understand the possibilities of this technology, good and bad, their place and appropriate form, and that all attempts to play God are dangerous propositions. I will wrap up this very long tangent by responding to people who always ask me how I don't know that humans aren't causing this climate shift with this Tesla-type technology if it's more than just CO2. Well, the magnetic pole shift and magnetospheric failure began hundreds of years ago, before Harp, Hairspray, and Henry Ford. And for those wanting to focus on an even shorter timeline, there have been anomalies of an electromagnetic nature throughout the solar system, starting with the sun but going throughout all the planets all the way to the ENA ribbon, missing bow shock, and local fluff. And if you are new here and haven't seen the videos Solar System Shift, and more recently, The Evidence, they will be linked below this video just like I did with the video The Solar Kill Shot. I will make sure it looks just like this below here as well. All the other links can be found below that or with the videos I just mentioned. Now these are some of the points I think that should be taken from this video, the two I highly recommended for catching up, and the kill shot, which will also be linked below. Why do we only get this one side of the climate story? Is it profiteering? Ignorance? Is it an attempt to use this long-term natural disaster to make us change our ways? I don't know, but this is what they should be telling you. 